It's back to the drawing board for the United Kingdom as well as Prime Minister Theresa May. The Brexit deal she struck with the European Union remains in a limbo. On Tuesday, May suffered a historic defeat in the House of Commons. Her deal was rejected. Yesterday, she managed to hang on to power by the nails. A no-confidence motion against the Prime Minister was rejected. 325 votes in her favour, 306 against her. But Theresa May cannot rest easy. The Brexit deadline is close. She has appealed to lawmakers across the political divide to help break the deadlock. The House has put its confidence in this government. Yeah. I stand ready. I stand ready to work with any member of this House to deliver on Brexit and ensure that this House retains the confidence of the British people. Yeah. I'm inviting MPs from all parties to come together to find a way forward. One that both delivers on the referendum and can command the support of Parliament. This is now the time to put self-interest aside. Theresa May says it's time to put self-interest aside. The catchword here is time. May has only five days to spell out her plan B before her Parliament. If she fails to get a modified deal passed after the Parliament debate on the 29th of this month, the UK faces a no-deal Brexit. But Theresa May's rival and Labour Party leader Jeremy Corbyn has put her in a spot of bother. Corbyn said that the prospect of a no-deal Brexit must be removed before any further discussion. Last night, the House rejected the government's uh, deal, emphatically. A week ago, the House voted to condemn the idea of a no-deal Brexit. Before there can be any positive discussions about the way forward, the government... <laughs> The government must remove, must remove clearly, once and for all, the prospect of the catastrophe of a no-deal Brexit of the EU and all the chaos that would come as a result of that. And I invite the Prime Minister to confirm now that the government will not countenance a no-deal Brexit from the European Union. But Theresa May is not ready to compromise on her deal. She also refuses to rule out a no-deal Brexit. The opposition, meanwhile, threatens to table more no-confidence motions. The Labour Party wants a general election, so do the Liberal Democrats. The Brexit chaos has a fallout in Europe as well. Other EU members are also preparing for this divorce. It affects their lives as well. France's Prime Minister met his cabinet to discuss Brexit, and soon after the meeting, France took a tough line. It said there is no question of making any concessions on the deal, which means there is a high chance of a no-deal Brexit. Food and medicine supply will be hit. Hundreds of thousands of labourers and consumers will be affected. March 29th is the Brexit deadline. Theresa May walks a political tightrope. She came to power on the back of the Brexit vote. She negotiated the deal with the European Union. And now she must get her own parliament on board. As Shakespeare said, to be or not to be, that is the question Britain faces. Joining us now is Vion's correspondent Oli Barat from London. Good evening, Oli. Theresa May has survived the leadership challenge, but there seems to be no movement on a Brexit deal. What does the British Prime Minister plan to do next? She is holding talks with MPs from opposition parties and in her own party to try and see if there is a compromise Brexit solution that can be reached, which could then be put to the European Union to see Britain exit the bloc as planned on the 29th of March of this year. That is a very tall order indeed, though not least because time is running out, but also because it's hard to see how exactly she'll reach a compromise with parliamentarians. We have, be, we have seen multiple demonstrations of how divided the UK's House of Commons is on the Brexit issue, so very difficult to see how she'll be able to reach some kind of solution in consultation with opposition MPs. Is the European Union willing to negotiate with the Theresa May government once again and what kind of a Brexit will be acceptable to all parties if such a deal exists? Brussels has always said that it, it is not open to new negotiations on the deal that's already been reached. Uh, that, that may be uh, able to be fudged uh, down the line if Theresa May goes back to Brussels and asks for a couple of specific changes here and there to her deal. But her deal, of course, has already been overwhelmingly rejected by British MPs. So that may not get her very far. What the European Union has also been clear about, though, is that if the UK's red lines change in terms of the red lines it set down in the previous negotiations, then the European Union would be willing to 
look again at some kind of alternative arrangement. So there are ways that these negotiations can be moved forward and can be reopened. Uh, in terms of whether there is a Brexit solution that is um, able to be agreed by the European Union and by parliamentarians here in the UK, that is another question entirely. The, the House of Commons here is incredibly divided on this issue, divided on the best way forward, divided on how negotiations should be handled with Brussels. So that is the difficult bit. So, so what about the demand for a second referendum? Is there a realistic chance for a people's vote now? There's a chance of a, a second EU referendum. At the moment, though, both of the leaders of the main parties here in the UK, the Conservatives, Prime Minister Theresa May and the Labour Party, led by Jeremy Corbyn, neither of those two leaders want to see a second referendum. So something will have to shift significantly for that to be on the cards. That said, Parliament is starting to uh, flex its muscles a little, trying to use legislation moving through the House of Commons um, to change bits of it, to try and move the government in the direction it wants to travel on Brexit. So that is one potential end point here, which is that Parliament moves the government towards a second Brexit referendum. But there's not necessarily a, a majority in the House of Commons for a second referendum either. So it remains a possibility, but things would have to shift significantly for us to, uh, to see that as the most likely outcome. So how should we read the, the results of this no-confidence motion last night? Is the threat to Theresa May's prime ministership truly over now? I think the assessment of that vote uh, of no confidence, which Theresa May managed to win, is that for now, Conservative MPs... Uh, are more fearful and, and dislike the idea more of Jeremy Corbyn, the opposition Labour leader, uh, potentially getting into Downing Street than they dislike their own leader, Theresa May. Now, many Conservative MPs uh, found her Brexit deal deeply unpalatable and voted against it in their dozens. But for now, they would rather... Theresa May was a Conservative Prime Minister, then they opened the door potentially to Jeremy Corbyn getting into Downing Street. So that's where we are now. That doesn't mean that that calculation can't also move at some point in the future. And, and certainly if it were to move, if the Labour Party were to smell blood here, then they will certainly bring another no confidence motion in the government at a time at which they think it's, uh, they have better chances of winning it. <laughs>